You are. You. The main one I always have would be Peter, James, and John. He always, them three right there, he kept with him. Hmm. But you wouldn't deny me. Even though you just said, I'm standing with you, Joe. And not only just him, the whole crew said, no, we ain't finna run. <laughs> that the word is that word is lying. We are not running. Mm. You let know the word don't lie. This mm. is what already been foretold. Mm. This is fin to happen. And the fruit is y'all gonna mm. high tail the room. You gonna scatter. Mm -hmm. He said, but we gonna come back together again in Galilee. He said, because it's, it's a work that you guys gonna have to take up because I got to leave here. Just like Pastor. Mm -hmm. You gonna have to catch hold because I got to leave here. Mm -hmm. You gonna y'all gonna have to take this church on to the next level, mm -hmm. to where God wanted to be. So we gonna get off into our struggling faith, and our teacher tonight is Teacher Woods. Teacher Woods, give her a hand as she comes. Yeah. Give a praise and honor to God, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to uh, Pastor Blanks and everyone else in the house of the Lord. I just pray that God speak through me, that I interpret his word correctly uh, and share it with y'all. Um, we were starting at Mark 14, 26. So I guess first, you know, let me just ask, well, why do you think people struggle with their faith? Why do you think people struggle with their faith? Don't have confidence. You know what they like confidence? Lack confidence. The worldly thinking uh, sets in. Yeah, they, we, we usually allow fear to set in. Mm -hmm. Be it fear of failure, fear of the unknown, mm -hmm. unknown right. fear of persecution, fear of death. Uh, it, it's, it's human nature to self-preserve. So, you know, like when, you know, like with Mother Edwards, that snakes bite, you have a natural fear of snakes. Nobody has to tell you to fear a snake. There's certain mm -hmm. things that you have an innate because you are protecting your man. You're protecting this person. Mm -hmm. So um, things that we feel are going to harm us, especially to the point of death, mm -hmm. it might cause us to react in a different mm -hmm. way when we're not prepared for it, when it catches us off guard. Mm -hmm. And then, therefore, you might struggle. You know, you know what God's word is, you know what you believe, but then when you're faced with it, your faith might alter a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mark 14, 26 reads, and when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. So after they had been in the upper room and they had, you know, broken the bread and everything, they had gone and um, they were leaving and they actually sang psalms. And uh, they would sing them in such a way to where, you know, the lead would sing and the rest would reply. And you just continue singing that way. And they had a, a group of psalms they uh, usually sang when they went out. And Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. Hmm. So see, he's trying to let them know. I'm just, you know, we just talking like we always do. And he's sharing with you, you know, all y'all are going to be offended about what's going to happen tonight. Oh, really? He says, for it is written. He quotes the text. It is mm -hmm. written. He quotes text. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's just like what they did with, um, with uh, Martin Luther King Jr. They felt he was getting too much power. He's got too many of these colors riled up. Mm -hmm. He can make them do things. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. We get rid of him, yes. the rest will scatter. Mm -hmm. And that's how you can take down a movement. You get mm -hmm. the head, get the, the rest will scatter. The rest will scatter. But after that, I am risen, and I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. Not me. See, he had good intentions. Peter mm -hmm. had good intentions. No, I'm your boy. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. I got you. I, I got ain't going you. nowhere. Yeah. He, he, he really meant that. Yeah. But you know, people have told us, never say never. Never say never. Yeah. And they, why do they tell you that? 
Never say never. Because you just might change. Because see, not, and, 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 but it may not even be you. See, the enemy, the, the devil stepped in. Because see, when, when we're so sure of ourselves, mm -hmm. that's the one area you're not watching your head. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. y'all know I'm good in this area. Mm -hmm. Me cheating? Oh no, I'm good in that area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Until he bring you somebody that mm -hmm. you wouldn't expect. You wouldn't mm -hmm. expect. He gets you in a situation where husband ain't doing right at home, all of these things are going on, y'all working late together, it starts out innocent. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See, that's why they tell us never say never, because see, he, he's going to create an atmosphere because your guard is already down. You, think you, got, you, you got that part. Oh, I'm good here. I'm strong here. That's why we have to be careful. Because wherever you think you're strong is probably the very place mm -hmm. you're gonna be the enemy is going to try and get you. And mm -hmm. test you. Because you're not, yeah, because you, you're, not, you're not watching that area. Mm -hmm. You know. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yes. And that can cause your faith to struggle when you, you know, get caught off guard. Okay, so. 30 tells us, and Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, Verily I say unto thee. See, he's saying, truly, believe me, this is, the, this is on the real, okay? That this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. But he spake the more vehemently. He's like, oh, oh. Then, and I began to say to them, no, no, I, 
you know, and she it says uh, that she stood by. And she said, no, this, this is, is one of them, them y'all. I know I've been, you know, around enough because if you, uh, let's see, anyone that I guess is different or a rebel, you know, they've probably been kind of watching, you know, and so they probably got to recognize some of them. So mm -hmm. she said, no, this is him. And so, and he denied it again. Mm -hmm. And a little after, they that stood by said again to Peter, surely thou art one of them, mm -hmm. for thou art a Galilean. And thy speech agreed there, there too. too. Okay, mm -hmm. so don't come in here talking Spanish telling me you ain't a Mexican. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Even if you're speaking English, you got a Spanish accent. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. There are gonna be telltale signs mm -hmm. that yeah. let me know that you are all a different, it. you know. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's what occurred. And so they're like, yeah, yeah, you want it, you sound like them. You got to say, you know. Accent. Your, your speech had given you away. It probably right. would have been better if yeah. you were speaking or something, you know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> you talking. Yeah. You gave yourself away. Okay, it says, but he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom you speak. Because it would be a man angry to so people back off. Yes. And, 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 and that's what you have with there's Some people are like that. They know they wrong. No, they wrong don't. up one side and down the other. They're trying to shout right. you down and intimidate you. Intimidate you. Right. back and all. You say, oh, okay. Mm. Yes. You know they wrong and they do too. Know they yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And so that's where he was here. But I will say this. He was afraid. He was a and that's the thing. We none of us can say what we do until we face it. Until we face it. Because like if somebody walked in here, like that, if that was not there, they just walked in that door. How we all be on the benches right now? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then don't let him say anybody here in a Christian stand. Anybody in here who is a Christian and who will die for Jesus stand up. Hmm. How many of us gonna be pushing pews over to get up? Hmm. I mean, I'm telling you the truth. I know what you're saying. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. We're going to be down there and we're going to be praying. Lord, let him leave. Let or him something. Leave. You know, but I'm just saying, when, when we're faced with those types of things, mm. you never really know. Never you're, know. You, you know what you would like to do. Mm -hmm. And I hope I'd have the courage to stand up and let him yeah. shoot me. But I ain't going to stand here and lie and say I will. Mm. <laughs> I just can't. I, I don't know. Yeah. And I'll probably be first when I decide no. I mean, <laughs> you know, but. Yes. You know, we would like to think that we would, would do that. And uh, in fact, um, some people are starting to role play uh, because uh, the students I'm talking about at the school, they were talking about how the young boys, they get into so much trouble because they don't know how to address authority. They don't know how to handle themselves in certain situations. So they start role playing with them. You know, if someone gets in your face and they do something like this, you what should you react think? this way. Yeah. You know, if someone grabs you, okay, yeah, they grabbed you. I'm sorry about that, but you should react this way. Right. You know, just like Pastor was saying when the guy hit her in the back at work, you should react this, this way. way. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And you show them how so to get out of situations, and, and that's something that we could even do, you know, if we wanted to. But the, but if you role play and you get familiar, you and then you know how to handle thing. yourself in situations to be administering witnessing, you see what I'm saying? Because you've role played and you've had people throw stuff at you, you know, okay? Super Just like you were saying when we were doing our Spanish uh, game. Oh, okay, I had that on the game today, so I learned pawn. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. That kind of thing, because you'll already be somewhat familiar. Familiar. And that might help us to make it through in certain situations. Yes. Okay, and so 72 says, and the second time the cop crew, boom, it's like you woke up. Hmm. A dog, you know what I'm saying? And Peter called to mind the word that Jesus mm -hmm. said unto him. And before the cock crowed twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. Right. And when he thought thereon, he wept. He wept. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh my God. Now he didn't just let a tear fall down like they did with Don't Mess With Texas. He cried like, oh my yeah. God. I did I exactly did what, what he, he told said. me. Mm. Yeah. And he was so broken from that because this was his friend. This was somebody he had just said, I will die. I will mm -hmm. die for you. Mm -hmm. And now he act like he don't even know him. Mm. Yes. 
and, and that hurt him to do that, mm. you know. But the, but the devil gets in us just as quick, you know. Yes. Um, but that's that's what happens, and, and it's that fear. It's that self-preservation. I don't want to die. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to hurt. No. I don't want to be in pain. Yeah. So you're going to protect yourself. You're going to protect yourself. It's human nature. So um, you just don't know how you're going to, to react. But uh, what I would love to be able to do is to do like the war room lady. Remember the war room lady when they were in the parking garage and the guy came out with a knife? Oh, yes. And she prayed him, she down. Prayed him down. You know, I would like to have the strength to do that. But I, I, that's not something I practice. You know, it might be something I can practice because the first, it's not the first thing that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I just got to where I start to call on the Lord more often because when I'm wrong, and I know I'm wrong, I don't pray. But you should pray even. You you're wrong. You're wrong because God said He can yeah. remove you from your yeah. own destruction. Mm -hmm. Like when I was speaking. Just like you, yeah. Because I <laughs> had a situation, prayed. and we'll we'll use that as an example. Yeah. My speeding, it was it was some years ago. It was uh, I think I was going here. I think I was going here. Um, but I had, I had got pulled over for speeding, right? And y'all, I'm telling you, I must have took that hill like Dan Patrick. I mean, I must have came over there like whoop whoop. It came right up behind me. I'm like, oh man. And so. The devil creeped in because the first time he asked me, ma'am, do you know how fast you're going? No, sir. No, but I'm looking at everything. But that's how it happens. That's you know what I'm saying? Happens. Because self-preservation, I don't want to check it if you don't know, I ain't telling you. You know what I'm saying? Whereas yeah. I could have said, well, yes, sir. I realize I'm a little lead footed I, you know, didn't realize the speed, but yes, I was going over 70 or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Had I been honest, you know, I probably could have gotten out of it. But he would have been like, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. You know, what well, had broke me the ticket. Now, I was in the car with Deborah. We were speeding too. Different street, but speeding nonetheless. And as soon as we saw him come behind us, he didn't turn his lights on right away. We immediately started praying. She's like, I don't need no ticket. Oh my God. Uh, no. Lord, Lord, no. Lord, 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 Lord. And we prayed, 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 prayed. And this guy followed us. He followed us onto the freeway. So onto the freeway, yeah. And, um, and then once we got onto the freeway, he went ahead and pulled off to the side. And we're like, hey! Yes, Lord. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. So prayer does work. But like I said, I didn't, that wasn't first nature first for me nature. a long time ago. Yes. You know, because especially when I knew I was wrong, mm -hmm. I was just pretty much accept. But you go ahead and pray anyway. Pray you know, anyway. Oh yes. So, uh, all right. So now, the fact of struggling faith is to understand that all believers are prone to denying that they follow the Lord. Because there could come a time to where is the difference between life and death. And we're going to say, no, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's, it's possible we're all prone to it depending on what the circumstances are. So the principle is to determine to follow the Lord no matter what the cost or risks may be. Okay, so that's what they want us to do. They want us to set that as a principle. And the application is to act in faith to identify ourselves as followers of Christ in any situation. Be like the lady in the war room and use prayer against a, a lot of things. Okay, so let's go to our questions. How did Jesus finish the Passover? Jesus concluded the Passover meal by taking, blessing, breaking, and giving bread to each of his disciples. He followed them by giving them, them a cup of drink to share. He gave new meaning to the symbol, symbols, telling them that the broken bread represent his body and the drink and the drink his blood soon to be shed on behalf of many people. Mm -hmm. Right. See, so he gave new meaning mm -hmm. to this. They had eaten together mm -hmm. many times. They had broken bread many times mm -hmm. and shared a cup many times. Mm -hmm. But this time was going to be different because he was not going to be spending this type of time with them anymore mm -hmm. for he was going to have to leave and go back to his father. Mm -hmm. So he wanted this to, for them to keep in remembrance of him. 
So his final pronouncement was that he would not fellowship in that way with them again until the day that he would drink in the new kingdom of God. Number two, what is the likely source of a hymn they sang? He says, pronouncement was followed by the singing of a hymn as they prepared to leave the upper room for their walk to the Mount of Olives. Normally the Hallel Psalms, which is Psalms 113 through 118, were sung or chanted antiphonically with the first two at the beginning of the meal and the rest at the end. So it is likely that one of the latter is what Jesus and his disciples sang as they prepared to exit the room. And so um, antiphonally is just uh, singing in unison, like where we'll say, uh, what does it mean? This means war. You know, yeah. you're, you're replying to whatever it is that they sing, and then y'all yeah. keep going, and y'all you know, are singing in that way. Yeah. Okay, so three. What did Jesus say to the disciples? Uh, what did Jesus say the disciples would do that night? And what scripture did he quote? And they quote, Jesus made another pronouncement. All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that, I am risen. I will go before you, before you in Galilee. The disciples were going to be caught off guard by what was about to, about to happen. About to happen yet. As a result, they would run from the situation instead of standing up to it. A fairly common practice for many of us and run and however they would be fulfilling the pro the prophecy of Zechariah three I mean Zechariah thirteen and seven, referring to the shepherd being struck and the sheep being scattered. Yes. And that makes me wonder uh, sometimes what is expected of us, you know? because uh, like when they were trying to cast the demons out, he had called them, you know, like a that that uh, generation that he was, he was tired of, <laughs> uh, where they had a uh, little faith or whatever, mm -hmm. and so, so, you know, kind of wonder what generation are we, what are we going to do, you know, but he doesn't want us to not be caught off guard, so I guess we just have to prepare ourselves, prepare ourselves. in such a way. So number four, what important event did he mention that the disciples did not seem to catch? It says Jesus then referred to his resurrection, explaining that afterward he would meet them in Galilee. All these disciples were from Galilee, uh, with Judas being the only exception. So it was a logical place for a post-resurrection reunion. They seem to have missed this point as we can see from how the conversation continued and from the fact that an angel later had to remind them of the appointment which is in Luke 24, 6-8. So he had to remind them of his resurrection. Right, because he had been saying all of that stuff but if you can remember a lot of the things that Jesus said, he spoke in parables. Yeah. A lot of stuff was confusing. He saved my temple's going to be torn down and built up in three days. They thought he was talking about a building. He was talking about himself. Right. So there were so many things that he would say mm -hmm. that it was um, literal. Most of it was symbolic. A lot of it had other meanings, mm -hmm. you know. And so therefore, they were like, I don't know what you're talking about, you know. And so they kind of went with that. And... But just like with this one, though, uh, it's not funny, but remember how in the movies a long time ago, and you would have black actors in the movie, and the black actor would always get killed off first? Yeah. I thought that was kind of odd how everybody was a but the one that was something else was the one that got killed anyway. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, because Judas was the only one that was different. 
from them. All the others have got Oh, I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's the, the sore thumb amongst people right. that are the same, but yeah. you're the only one that's different. So you gonna get done away with first. Right, because I used to be in the movie, remember the black character would always get killed off first. I didn't see it that way <laughs> until they point out that he yeah. was the exception yeah, he was the and he was the one. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I'm just saying. That was a good point. Mm. Mm. Okay, so um, number five. How did Peter react to Jesus' warning about their abandonment, abandonment of him? He addressed Peter personally. personally. Not only was he going to be this law just like the others, but he would go a major step farther and openly deny him three times. This would occur on that day before the cock crowed twice. The word, the word translated deny in Mark 14 and 30 means to this own Peter denial will be extremely in adamant. adamant. This was too much for Peter. I got number five is Jesus had clearly stated that God would strike the shepherd right. causing the sheep to be scattered. Peter however was not about to be to believe he would forsake Jesus for any reason. Even if the others forsook him, he would be the exception and remain loyal. Right. Because if you think about it, look at it like uh, the church, for instance. Mm -hmm. Our church is small, but everybody in here is pretty close. But there's a few of y'all that's closer than others because you have a blood tie. Do you yes. see what I'm saying? So Peter, James, and John went with him everywhere. I mean, they went up to the Mount of Transfiguration. I mean, everywhere. They got to go places that the others didn't get to go. So you have your church, then you have an inner circle. He was a part of Jesus' inner circle. He got to see him standing there with Moses and Elias, right? Elijah, right? He got to see that. A lot of people didn't see that. So. He was right in there, so therefore, he was vested. He was down with him. He was sincere when he said, I will die with you. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But what this goes to show us is you never know what you're going to do until you face with it. Until you face with it. Especially if you're not prepared. If you haven't said, God, you know, strip me of me. Help me to be strong in my faith. Help me to do that. You know what I'm saying? Help me to stand in a time of trial or whatever the case may be, yeah. you know, even unto death. So, um, so number six, what was Jesus' response? Sister Johnson just spoke about that. Okay, right, okay. About him denying him three times. He pointed right, out, so, you're going to deny me three times. So, so Jesus had to confirm to him yeah, you're going to this do is it. actually going to happen, and this is how I know it is actually written. And God's word does not come back void. Yeah, None of it is falling to the ground. Mm -hmm. And since I'm the lamb, mm -hmm. and he says, you know, that I'm going to be we'll smoking, sure. you guys are going to scatter, that's pretty much what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Okay. So, number seven, how did Peter reaffirm his determination to be loyal, and who agreed with him on that? This was too much for Peter. He responded vehemently, meaning forcefully and with emotion, uh, claiming he would die with Jesus before he would ever do such a thing. And apparently Peter's strong affirma affirmation emboldened with the others for for they all chimed in with voices of agreement yeah we on the same page we're not going to leave you either right and, and think about it though if you really really think about it you know the two of you are sisters okay mm -hmm. if she were to call you out in this church in front of all of us say deborah you gonna do this you know 
right? Yeah. No, I am not. I am not. I'm yeah. telling you, you gonna do, you gonna be the one to do this to, to me, me. Mm -hmm. right? Right. And you gonna, I am not, and I'm. You gonna get mad about it, and you gonna yeah. try to convince her that she's wrong. Girl, y'all yeah, fight with you. <laughs> <laughs>
No, you did a great job. Amen. All right. Amen.